So this is going to be the remnant fly number 10. This is, a, I'm pretty certain, a TMCO 7999 salmon hook, probably in about a one aught. Yeah, I would say probably that's about a one, maybe a two aught. It's just a hook that was in my remnant box and looked at it and I thought, wouldn't mind doing just some sort of salmon slash steelhead kind of thing. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to use for thread, I'm just using the Danville 6 aught in black. I'm going to attach my thread a little bit behind the eye. Just on the other side of the return, the eye return. Bring my thread all the way down to not quite the point of the hook. These have such a deep bend in them that the body is actually going to bend right about here. You go a little bit further if you want, but I'm wanting to have something that's a little bit straighter out that way. For the tail material, I'm going with kind of a green and yellow coloring on this. And I'm just going to use some hackle fibers from this rooster, probably a, a Whiting American rooster cape. I'm going to strip those off. I'm going to tie these in maybe about the full body length. wrap that in a couple of times. I'm going to put one wrap right up underneath it just to help prop it up. Smooth that off just a little bit. Actually I'm going to, because I got a floss body I'm going to put on this so I want these curlies. I kind of want to take those out. I'm going to smooth that off. I'm going to put in a two turn chenille, black chenille butt on the back end of this. So I've got some large black chenille. Attach that to the hook. Advancing forward maybe about an eye length right here, that should give me enough room for two turns of this back here as a butt. suppose I could have put a tip on this. Just kind of wanted to keep it simple. And these are the materials that I, I happen to pick up out of the remnant box just to see how they would do. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. The rayon chenille gets kind of flat. A nylon chenille might have worked better there. I'm going to use a oval tinsel for my rib. And I'm going to put in some yellow floss back here. About half this body is going to be yellow floss. The other half is going to be some kind of olive green dubbing that I found. Thought it might look kind of nice. Make certain I wrap this down right up against the butt there. Probably should have had a somewhat more of a transition for this in terms of um, gonna have a little bump back there. This is four strands, by the way. This is a, a yellow Danville rayon loss.
Yeah, I got a little bit of a bump right in the back there. Probably should have twisted up that a little bit more, maybe extended that up. I don't know, to get rid of that bump. I've not tied a whole lot of these this style of fly. So there's always more to learn. I'm gonna go ahead and put my dubbing on. This is um like I said, it's kind of an olive. It looks like a maybe a little bit of rabbit and some um ice dub in there maybe some antron and this isn't necessarily to get a big bushy body as much as it is just to have kind of a thorax on this that a little bit meatier than than the back end Add a little bit more. And I'll take my rib up. So to finish it off up front, rather than put in a throat, I thought I was going to, I would palmer, excuse me, I would wrap in a collar of some yellow schloppen. And then for a wing, I've got a little bit of Arctic fox, some green Arctic fox here. So we'll see how that matches up. I've got two yellow schloppen hackles, and I'm using two because of the fact that these are kind of short. Again, it's what's left over out of my remnant box that was used in other flies. So the mainstay of these feathers were used in something else. That's fine. But I'm going to match these up. I only need two or maybe three wraps anyway. I'm going to match those butt ends up, and I have peeled away some of the barbs there so that I can get that tied in real well. Again, I'm only looking for two or three wraps here with both of these. By using two, I'm just getting twice as many barbs. Like I said, if this was longer i could just put in a little bit extra wraps maybe four or five wraps by using two i'm just accomplishing the same thing a little quicker that's really all i needed right there was about three wraps secure that in Trim away the excess. Now, I'm going to sweep this back. I'm going to make certain I get that trimmed. Tie that back a little bit and lay a foundation for a wing on this. It's actually not bad looking fly right there. Coming together pretty good. Look at that. 
I'm going to take this Arctic Fox right here, and what I want to do is kind of get this together in my hand, get the hair 90 degrees to the skin as best I can, and then go ahead and cut that off. It's going to leave me with a nice chunk, big chunky chunk of wing here. Try and trim that up a little bit to tie that in. Set this right up here and just tie this on in. Now it's not going to look like a great wing while it is out of the water. Especially since I haven't tied a lot of these and I'm not exactly certain of the material and all of that good stuff. In the water that wing will flow and move constantly. So I will go ahead and get a whip finish in here. Cut away my thread and the remnant fly number 10 is done. I think I repurposed this hook. There's something on, like some head cement or something on the eye here. Sometimes some of those hooks, that's what they are. They other flies that got destroyed, I'll cut everything off and just keep the hook and repurpose it. There's the remnant fly number 10, a little salmon style type of fly. Put some head cement on that, and then probably I will eventually go ahead and put some black lacquer on that just to spruce that up a little bit. So a little salmon steelhead kind of flowy thing for the remnant fly number 10. If you've got any suggestions for any of these remnant flies, I do kind of shoot from the hip, but as long as it comes out of that box, my remnant fly box, then I'm good. But um, I mean, if there's a style fly you'd like to see, they're kind of freehand flies, you know, something if this spurs something, some thought of creativity in your head, just let me know. I'd be, I'd be curious. So there is the remnant fly number 10. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.